John chapter 1, verse number 14. John chapter 1, verse number 14. I'm going to read all the way uh, to, until verse 16. All the way until verse 16. The Bible says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of a father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me, preferred before me, for he was before me. Verse 16. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Receiving grace for grace. We have all received grace for grace. We have been looking at uncommon grace and uh, we've been looking at some scriptures with our key scripture is second peter chapter one let me just go there verse two that says grace and peace be yours or be multiplied through the knowledge of god of our lord jesus christ grace and peace be multiplied and today we are looking at this verse john chapter 1 verse 14 that the grace the fullness of grace and truth that jesus has has been revealed to us has been revealed to us has been revealed to his people and we know that the God that we serve has already done it for us so as we begin I wanted to know my topic is easy today I just want to pray that God is gonna help me to just expose what we need to expose by the grace of God I'm talking about enemies of grace enemies of grace and by grace I know we will be able to expose some of these enemies and how to deal with them. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that you've given to us. I pray, God, let your hand, let your power rest upon this meeting. Father, illuminate your word. Lord, let your wisdom use me, God. Use my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. And I pray, God, for my viewer, God, open their mind to understand and to overcome these enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen and amen. We defined grace as undeserved favor of God, we defined it as the enabling power. We defined grace as the divine help. When we began three days ago, we said that unfavorable grace is uh, God qualifying uh, the unqualified. We say that grace is the mightiness of God invading the weakness of man. We say that grace is what beautifies Christianity. And today we just want to pick it up from there so that you understand what God has for us. Grace, we can also say, is, is God uh, doing what uh, you could never do for yourself. Grace is God doing for you what you could never do for yourself. Grace is God's riches uh, at Christ's expenses. We can say that grace uh, is what makes the difference. Grace is what makes the difference. And we say that grace uh, is all what makes us to be what we need to be. There are different types of graces. We can talk about uh, many graces because Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Bible says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you. So there are different types of graces that we can talk about. And, and we can talk about career grace. We can talk about financial grace. We can talk about marital grace. But I want you to understand that there is nothing that you can achieve without grace. And the enemy knows that, that there is nothing that we can achieve as Christians without grace. That is why he wants us not to enjoy the grace because grace uh, is very, very important to us. In fact, the gifts that you have, when they work, they work because of the grace of God. Grace will always make you to go through difficulties. It's grace that provides for us uh, everything that we need. It is grace that is the lifter of man. And the God that we serve is a God that gives us grace. So the enemy knows, the enemy knows that when you have grace, 
you are your trajectory is up and you are going to make it so he will fight to ensure that you don't enjoy this grace you don't enjoy the grace of god he will come your way to ensure that this grace does not come uh, the way it's supposed to be so there are enemies there is what the devil has planted so that you do not enjoy the grace of god but tonight he's defeated as we are going to see and as we're going to expose him and we take time to pray i want you to understand it does not matter the enemy that has come your way to hinder you i want to tell you by this revelation you will overcome every enemy that is trying to sabotage your grace every work of the devil that is trying to stand your way to make sure that you don't enjoy the grace of god tonight we are going to defeat it in the name of jesus because the grace of god is sufficient the grace of god has been given to humanity and the grace of god is what makes you to cut a niche for yourself but the devil does not want it to happen that is why i said he will come to hinder you he will come to fight you he has planted enemies your way so that you are not able to access and enjoy this grace that god has for you but tonight you will defeat those enemies if you are with me and you're believing it i want you to say amen shout a big amen know that you're going to defeat defeat your enemies please call someone tell someone to watch because tonight there's some enemies we're exposing some things that are hindrances in our life that make us not to enjoy the grace maybe you're asking pastor what are these enemies what are these hindrances that are making us not to enjoy the uncommon grace of god number one enemy is dwelling in your past dwelling in your past your past is an enemy your past can be a hindrance for you to enjoy the uncommon grace your past is very dangerous it's important for you to understand you need to overcome the past isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 the bible says forget the former things do not dwell in the past do not dwell on the past see i am doing a new thing now it shall spring up do you not perceive it i'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the westlands god is saying do not dwell on the past do not dwell on the past one way of you enjoying uncommon grace is to make sure that you walk away from the past you cannot keep on embracing your past keep on talking about your past keep on thinking about your past keep on uh, 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 saying things about your past and and you and then you're thinking about it and you're dwelling on it and you're desiring it and then you see the uncommon grace of god it cannot happen in your life it's important for you to know that you have to come to a place where you disregard the past in order to enjoy the new you have to come to a place where you disregard it the past in order to enjoy the new god is so clear about this for you to have uncommon grace he he will only be only obligated in your life to bring the new thing to pour in uncommon grace when you have done what when you have already forgotten the past when you have already forgone the past so he says don't dwell on the past don't put your mind on it don't don't look at it all the time so he says you have to do it for you to see the new thing notice the bible says see i am doing a new thing he does not begin to do the new thing if you are still dwelling on the past and common grace is not injected in your life for the newness if you're still in the past understand this thing grace specializes with the future and common grace specializes with the future it does not dwell on your past it dwells on your future it is for your future it gives you a trajectory into your future so when you are busy looking into your past what you're doing you're contravening the work of uncommon grace grace has been sent to you to do what to push you to your future did, did you do you notice that when god is thinking about it he's not thinking about it concerning using the past he thinks about you using the future he talks about you using the future that is why when he came to gideon he referred to him as a mighty man of warrior as a mighty man of war yet at that time the guy was very fearful that is why the bible says let the weak say they are strong why because god deals with that with us 
us according to the future and he has planned for the future that is why he says i have good plans for you i have laid good plans for you to give you what unexpected end he's thinking about the end and the expected end in your life so when we are talking about uncommon grace you don't dwell on your past if you're busy dwelling on your past guess what you are locking your future now listen to this god puts away the old in order to bring the new that is the order of god he puts away the old in order to bring the new first corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 the Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation. And the Bible says the old has gone. The new has come. The grace of God is always injected in our life when we learn to do what? To put away the old. You have to understand that God cannot do the best that he wants to do in your life if your mind is still in the past you have to disregard the past for you to enjoy the uncommon grace that god has for you for you to carry the uncommon grace you need to understand you need to you have to do what do away with the burden of the past you cannot carry the uncommon grace if you're still carrying the burden of the past the past does not belong to the present neither does it belong to the future all what you need to do is to understand that grace is very futuristic when grace steps in it has the ability to even give you a launching pad it does not matter what you have been in the past you know there are people who are saying i have done this i've done that i cannot be anything i came to tell you my brother forget the past let the past go because if god has stepped in you to give you grace the grace of god is futuristic they are common the uncommon grace of god looks into the future it does not send you back to your past it does not take you back to your past that is the work of the law and we are not living in the law we are living in the grace the dispensation of grace is the dispensation that opens us to the future and the future that god has for you is a great future a singer sang and said i see you in the future and it looks right better than now and that is what i want to repeat to you the future is better than now the future is better than your past the future is greater than your past and that is the work of grace it pushes you to the future don't dwell on your past don't look at it don't think about it don't let the devil condemn you out of it romans chapter 8 the bible says there is now therefore no condemnation i know you know sometimes the devil can bring a lot of condemnation to tell you that you know you cannot be anything look at the sins that you have done look at the things that you have done look at the way you are unworthy but i came to tell you grace when grace picks you it picks you and it makes you clean grace did not come for people who are right great grace was not sent for people who are uh, clean grace was sent for people who are sinful and when grace comes to you it washes you it makes you what you need to be so don't dwell on your past don't look down on yourself and say because of what i've done in the future i will not amount to anything no 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 you are the best candidate for what god has for you you are greater than what you think your future is better because grace is preparing you for the future and it is pushing you for the future therefore don't dwell on the past tell your neighbor don't dwell on the past maybe people know your past and they have been telling you about your past but i came to tell you don't dwell on the past do you know there are people who have a special anointing of of, of archaeologists their work is just to go and dig the past they dig the past they are historians and they go to the ancient things to to bring them out you know when god forgave you the bible says he took your sins as far as the east is from the west he buried it in a place where no one can go and and remove it again so don't go don't be an archaeologist who goes to dig what god has already done what god has already removed from your life that is what you're digging it out and you're bringing it again no 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 when god God dealt with it he dealt with it perfectly that is why the bible says you are justified just as if you had not done the sin before it is the reason why at one point paul said i have wronged no man why because when you keep dwelling in the past it will not help you when god washes you he washes you and he does a perfect job therefore there is no past that you should be looking at and your past is not following you because god has made you to be a new creature 
God has made you to be a new creature. When someone says, you know, I know you, why are you not the thief that was there? Refuse, tell them it is not I. It is not I. Why? Because I am a new creature. If someone tells you, we know you, you, you are the prostitute that you tell them, no, it is not I. Why? Because God has made me to be a new creature. The grace of God has worked in my life. And since the grace of God has worked in my life, I am new. I am not the old one. I am a new one and I cannot dwell in the past. Look at the future. Your future is brighter, my brother. Your future is better. Therefore, don't let the enemy keep on pulling you down because of your past. One enemy is the enemy of the past. Number two enemy of grace is living in sin. Sin is an enemy of grace. Sin is an enemy of grace. You cannot enjoy uncommon grace if you are constantly living in sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 1 says like this, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase by no means he refuses he says we cannot continue on sinning you know people say we are living in the dispensation of grace and since we are living in the dispensation of grace we can do anything that we we we, we can i mean and and is the reason why even the gospel of 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 inclusion uh, inclusivity came in that god can never take you to hell he can never burn you but let me tell you god will will judge you when you sin and it's important for you to know you need to let sin i mean leave sin let let go the life of sin even though we are living in the time of grace don't just be there saying i will continue sinning because we are living in the dispensation no 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 paul says shall we continue sinning because we are living in the time of grace he said no by no means we are we cannot why because we died to sin you died to sin and since we died to sin we can no longer live in it for grace to work in our life for grace to continue increasing in our life it's important for you to know you need to live the life of sin let us not abuse this dispensation of grace let us not abuse this time that god has given unto us you know he will judge us harshly he will judge us harshly he will judge you know in this generation people people just do anything and they don't feel anything they don't feel anything I remember there was a woman who was caught in adultery and she was asked why are you still committing adultery and she said no it is not adultery it's just a biological necessity that I am doing and and you know uh, people have come with all manner of names and all manner of things to sugarcoat sin sin is sin whether you call it a biological necessity whether you call it anything it is still sin and that sin if you continue harboring it in your heart guess what happens you are hindering yourself from enjoying the blessing of god during the time of law if you are caught committing any kind of sin the bible says if, if it's an eye an eye for an eye you know if 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 you if it's a tooth it's a tooth for an eye if if you're caught in adultery you would have been stoned like the woman that was brought to jesus to be stoned but you know what you became guilty when you are caught you became guilty in the law you became guilty when you were caught and now people are living in the dispensation of grace and they're saying you know grace uh, allows us because god is so graceful he's so merciful he's not gonna punish me i can do whatever i'm gonna do even if i sin i will not die like an anaya and sapphira uh, god is so merciful yes god is so merciful but understand one thing this generation will be judged harshly it will be judged harshly why because even though we are living in a dispensation of grace understand this thing jesus came and said if matthew chapter 5 verse 38 anyone that looks at a woman lustfully has already committed lust now you don't need in the dispensation of grace you don't need to go and do the act physically if you have just thought about it you are already guilty of it if it is in your heart you're already guilty of it and that is why you cannot abuse this time you cannot just say ah i'm living in grace i'm enjoying grace and therefore i can do whatever i need to do and the grace of god is gonna cover me let me tell you my brother you need to have a repentative heart if your heart is not repentative god is saying clearly that anyone that looks it is a sin in the heart you've not done it physically you've just sinned in your heart he says you are guilty of 
it. That is why we need to abuse sin. We need to resist this, the devil. We need to get away out of it. We need to live a life that honors God. We need to tell God, God, help us. We repent of any sin. You cannot intentionally keep on getting into the same thing and then you're just saying the grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God. You cannot intentionally do things against God and you're just saying, I'm enjoying the grace of God. You are abusing it, my brother. And God will judge us harshly for doing it think about it he just says if you just look lustfully if you just think in your heart the other day we spoke and we said the sins that are going to make people not to enter heaven most of them are going to be the sins of a heart the sins of a heart jealousy pride what you did no one saw it but you did it secretly you are doing it secretly in your heart god is looking at the heart the bible says so so it's important for you to know sin is an enemy so paul is asking him should you continue sinning because you have received grace he answers them and he tells them no we have died to it say i have died to sin you have died to it and since you are dead to it you cannot continue living in it you cannot continue entertaining it you cannot continue getting into it intentionally and then you start saying the grace it is abuse of it and it is an enemy you will be just saying grace but because you are living a, a wrong life, you will, not, you will not enjoy the blessing of it. Number three, enemy of uncommon grace is ignorance. Ignorance. We have received grace, the Bible says, upon grace. Increase of grace. And we'll talk about it. Jesus in the fullness has come to do what? He came in, in the fullness of grace. And we beheld him with truth. And now we have received grace upon grace. He has given to us. May grace multiply in your life. Ah, let me tell you, you need to get to such a place. But there is a devil somewhere that does not want you to enjoy this grace. Ignorance is very, very dangerous. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Oh, grace and peace is yours, according to NIV. Through the knowledge of God. Now, it's important for you to understand. Grace comes to us through knowledge. Not through ignorance. Through knowledge. Grace be multiplied to you. Through what? Through the knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand knowledge is paramount for grace to be multiplied in your life. Ignorance. Ignorance, therefore, is very dangerous. It is a dangerous state for any Christian to be ignorant. It is a very, very dangerous state. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, My people are destroyed for lack of what? Lack of knowledge. Not because the devil is fighting them. No. Brother, the devil is not your issue. So don't keep on just saying it's the devil. Don't keep on just saying it's the devil. I had a story of how one day the devil, it's just a story, it says the devil appeared crying. And he was crying and crying. Then God asked him, why are you crying? And he said, he said to God, oh, those people on, on earth are saying I'm the one who did this. I'm the one who did that. I have not done it. I'm not the one who did it. They did it for themselves. It is not me. It is just a story that, that we are being told. Most people believe that their problem is because of a devil. But let me tell you, sometimes the devil is not the issue. It is your ignorance. It is what you're doing that is putting you into that particular problem. It is what you're doing. So you can bind you can bind and to do all the manner of binding. But guess who you are binding? It is not the devil. It is you. You are binding yourself. Because when you come out of ignorance, you are able to get into the blessing that God has for you. Not everything that we go through is, is because of demons. It is because of ignorance. If, for example, money has been deposited in your account and you do not know there's money there, and therefore you cannot go to that account you are ignorant of it you will not enjoy the benefits of it it's like the story of these west africans that we had uh he moved he was traveling on on, on board a ship from west africa i think to to united states and as he was going he came with food in the ship and he was eating cracking his nuts every day when people are going to eat he would hide to eat when people are going to eat he would hide to eat until one day his food was depleted and when the food was depleted people went to eat he could not eat he kept on hiding he kept on eye hiding until he started emaciating then one of a friend came and asked him how comes you do not come to eat with us and the man said you know i don't have money to pay for for the food 
And the man told him, no, 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 no. Your ticket was inclusive of every meal in this particular ship. And the man discovered, oh, I have missed my breakfast. I have kept on missing my lunch. I have missed my dinner. What happened to me? I have missed it. I've missed it. So he went to eat. And guess what? When he was going to eat, that was the last meal that was being served in the ship because they were about to dock in the other side. And he missed all the privileges because he was ignorant. When you are ignorant, you will not enjoy the blessings and the benefits of your grace. And common grace is something that is released to you through knowledge. And that is why you need to increase knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, get to a place where you are taking in knowledge. You are imbibing in knowledge. Read books if you can. Learn whatever you can. Get to school if you need to get to school. Do something. Don't just be there. Not acquiring knowledge. Not imbibing anything. Not getting anything new. Buy something. Read. Make it your habit to always get knowledge. Be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable. Because the grace of God works in in your life in fact according to the knowledge that you have you know when you increase your knowledge you are able to do more the grace of God is able to do more in your life because of that knowledge but when you are ignorant nothing happens God cannot work with zero there has to be something you have to know you have to increase so he says let this grace be multiplied through knowledge ignorance ignorance is one reason why many Christians are not enjoying uncommon grace. And tonight it has to be defeated in the name of the Lord. We bind that spirit of ignorance. We refuse it right now in the name of Jesus. Hosea chapter 6 verse 6. The Bible says, I, For I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice and in the knowledge of God than burnt offering. That was the delight that he had. In the knowledge of God. You need to have delight in God's knowledge. Following God's knowledge. Going for God's knowledge. Seeking the knowledge of God. And you will see the blessing of God in your life coming into your life and the Bible says clearly you need to have it says you know God says this that the truth that you know will do what will set you free the truth that you know will set you free John chapter 8 I think the truth that you know you have to know something you have to know you have to increase knowledge as you keep on increasing knowledge grace is being dispensed in your life may you receive grace in the name of Jesus enemy the other enemy, number four, of, of uncommon grace is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is another enemy. You rob yourself when you do not forgive. You rob yourself the grace of God when you do not forgive. When you, when you harbor resentment and bitterness in your heart, what happens? You rob yourself the blessing, the uncommon grace of God. You rob yourself this grace. And therefore, it is very important for you to understand, you need to come to a place where you forgive. You forgive. You let go. You make sure you are not keeping people in your heart. You remember yesterday we said, if a man of grace has wronged you, don't carry them in your heart. Don't carry them in your heart. In fact, there are some people I have decided in my heart, they will not offend me. Regardless of what they do, I cannot carry them as in my heart offended. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot afford living without forgiving them. Why? Because when you live in unforgiveness, you do not enjoy the grace. Now, Jesus told, and he said, told the disciples, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And then he says, this, he says, forgive us as we forgive. Forgive us. You are forgiven to the proportion that you are able to forgive. God will not forgive you. The grace, and you remember we said grace is the grace of salvation. So salvation, forgiveness of salvation will never come your way if you are not willing to forgive. You need to forgive. When you forgive, then God forgives you. It is important for you to know, as you keep on forgiving, God forgives you. As you keep on repenting, then God also does something in your heart. You cannot carry people in your heart and you're saying, I'm not forgiving. And then you expect the glory of God to come upon you. No, 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 no. God's grace is a function of forgiveness. You have to let go. When you harbor it in your heart, that hinders the grace of God. Some of you, you would be very far, but because of unforgiveness in your heart, you have already deviated from the will of God. You have already short-circuited uh, the blessing of God in your life. You have already short-circuited the grace of God in your life. Just because of unforgiveness, uh, Pastor, you know, uh, I don't feel like forgiving. Let me tell you, forgiveness is a choice. It is not a feeling. 
It is not a feeling. That is why Jesus said, do not let the sun go down in your anger. It is not about a feeling. It is a principle you need to know. I need to let go. I need to forgive. You need to give the forgiveness. And when you do that, guess what? You usher yourself to enjoy the grace of God. But unforgiveness becomes an enemy in your life. You need to forgive. Can you say amen? Number five reason. Number five uh, enemy of, of grace is being judgmental. Being judgmental. Being a great critic, a too critic, uh, uh, there are people who are critics. They are so judgmental. So judgmental. You see someone, you judge them. You judge people. You judge them by the way they dress. You know, you judge them by the way they look. You judge them by the way they are. And you know, sometimes it is very hard. Can you imagine if, if someone comes to church and is a prostitute and they come to give their life to Christ, they will, not, they will not change their clothes so that they can come and receive Christ. You need to come the way you are. And what we need to do is to have a church that is not judgmental. Sometimes we don't experience the grace of God because we are not gracious. You need to be gracious. Don't be the one always lifting fingers, lifting fingers, judging fingers, judging people. And you know what? Sometimes some of those people who keep judging people, they judge them not because those people have done those things. It is because those, they are the ones who are struggling with those things. You are struggling with something. So you keep judging someone harshly about it. And you keep judging someone harshly about it. And you guess when you do that, you are cutting yourself from the grace of God. A woman was brought to Jesus. And the woman had committed adultery. And these people told Jesus, we must stone her. We must kill her. Then Jesus stooped low and he began to write on the ground. And when he wrote on the ground, he told them this, if there's anyone who has no sin, let him be the first one to cast the stone. Let him be the first one to throw the stone. And he continued writing. And guess what? Everyone remembered, even though this woman has committed adultery, even me three years ago, I committed adultery. Even though this woman has done this and she has been caught, me I've done it five times. I have never been caught. Why? If if you look at yourself you will discover you are a greater sinner than the one you're trying to judge you are greater that is why it says do not remove the speck in your neighbor's eye and you leave the plank in your own eye you're trying to remove a sawdust and you're leaving this big bolt of wood that is in your eye you cannot see it see yourself first stop being judgmental stop being judgmental why because the grace of god works with people ah pastor you know these people commit sin whatever they are, they are doing is not correct yes we do not condone sin i'm not saying you should condone sin understand something the grace of god works in people the grace of god teaches people the grace of god shows someone what they need to do and if there's somebody that that does not understand pray that the grace of god will rest upon them and that grace of god will enable them to overcome whatever always brings them down if we are people who are being, who are showing mercy and grace guess what we will win many to christ because we are gracious but most of the time we are too judgmental that is why people never like being around you that is why people don't want to follow your God because you are too judgmental. Our messages are too judgmental. I'm not saying we should condone sin but we should not be judgmental 24 7. Sin is sin. It should be mentioned but we need to also show grace because we are all growing in different levels of graces and since we are all growing in different levels of graces if i show mercy i receive mercy if i show grace i receive grace but if i'm not so showing mercy i am too judgmental guess what i'm doing judgment is coming my way matthew chapter 7 verse 1 the bible says do not judge or you too will be judged do not judge others the same way you judge others, the Bible says, you will be judged uh, with the same, same measure that you used. You are too critical, criticizing. Let me speak to that Christian. You are too critical, too critical, criticizing. You criticize the wives of everybody. You criticize the husbands of everybody. You criticize, and you know, you yourself, you are not married yet. And when you keep doing that, what will happen? It will be difficult for you. It will be difficult for you. So don't be too judgmental. Don't be too judgmental. Don't be out there. Don't be the police. You know, there are those who are, are anointed like they are the fashion, the spiritual fashion police. 
and all what they do is to come to where people are to judge. You need to be like this. You need to wear your clothes up to this level. You need to do it up to that level. Let me tell you, we are living by the grace of God. Pray that the grace of God will work in us. And when the grace of God, if everyone fully accesses the grace of God, I guarantee you, it teaches you. It shows you what you need to do. So don't be too harsh. Don't be too judgmental. In the name of the Lord, can somebody shout and say amen? The other one, number seven, uh, that uh, I think it's number seven, enemy is fleshly efforts. Fleshly efforts. When you put fleshly efforts, these fle efforts are not going to make you gain grace. Because grace is not by your effort. It's not by fleshly efforts. It is not by the law. It is not by the law. It is not by doing this and doing that and doing this. It is by the mercy of God. And it's important for you to know when you're serving God, don't do it with fleshly effort. Whatever you're doing to God, don't do it to be seen. Don't do it to look good to people. No, 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 no. Don't do it to please people. Do for God. And when you do it for God, guess what? Grace is going to come over your life. Let me mention the other enemy quickly. Tradition. Tradition is an enemy of grace. Traditionalism will always hinder you from enjoying grace. Now the Bible says clearly, forget the former things. Isaiah 43. See, I am doing a new thing. Forget the former thing. You cannot keep on remaining in the same tradition and you expect great things. No, no, no. You have to forget. You have to forget. Tradition is a fence and a barrier of uncommon grace that hinders you it is a, a barrier that hinders you from uncommon grace you cannot do the new thing if you are stuck in the tradition of man you cannot enjoy uncommon grace if you're totally stuck in the traditions of man it is important for you to be open to the work of the holy ghost open to the move of the holy ghost be ready for god and you will see god doing great things in your life be ready for god and you'll see god doing great things in your life it is important for you to know you need to live traditions you need to live traditions traditions kill grace they are good traditions yes but bad traditions kill grace Tri traditionalism binds or blinds you from experiencing the uncommon grace it is like the pharisee who kept on living in traditions he kept on living in tradition and they kept on doing the tradition they need they didn't know that jesus has brought grace and he has come with a new thing you know the newness of god will begin working in you if you are willing to let go yesterday's tradition and you tell god god do the new thing do the new thing it's important for you to know you need to do the new thing even now i was looking at this season of COVID-19 and you know what whether you like it or not the di dynamics have changed you have to up your game we have now to do things in a new way we are all washing our hands we are all keeping ourselves we are all maintaining social distance and I know this thing will affect us for long why because the dynamic is not gonna change people after COVID-19 will still maintain you will still you will still be conscious of some things why because you need to live traditions and understand that God is allowing you and is doing a new thing in your life. May you receive the newness of God in you. May you receive the newness of God in your life. And the last one I want to talk about quickly is lack of faith. Lack of faith is a lack is an enemy of grace. Lack of faith is an enemy of grace. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. The Bible says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with what? With confidence. There is a throne called the throne of grace. And you can only approach it with confidence when you come in faith. That is when you receive the mercy of God and you will find grace to help you. So it's important for you to know grace demands what? It demands faith. You are able to access the grace of God when you do what? When you come by faith. When you live in doubt. You don't access the grace of God. It is an enemy. 
Doubt is an enemy. It's something that hinders you from not seeing the grace of God. And we need to break that spirit of doubt. You need to come to a place where you have faith in God. Where you build your faith in God. Because lack of faith is an enemy of uncommon grace. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. And now faith is. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. The substance of things hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for. Remember I told you. Grace is futuristic. What you are hoping for. You can only access when you have faith in your heart. Grace demands faith. And it's important for you to know. You need that faith. Enemies will come your way. And they will want to hinder you. From experiencing this grace. They will come to hinder you. From experiencing the blessing of God. But guess what. Tonight we are going to defeat that enemy. In the name of Jesus. Every enemy that has come to hinder you. You are defeating the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know enemies know one thing. They know clearly. That when grace comes in your life. Great things are going to happen. That is the reason why the enemy does not want you to enjoy the grace of God. But tonight, you're going to enjoy the grace of God. Can you say, I'm going to enjoy uncommon favor in the name of Jesus? Can you shout and say, I'm going to enjoy uncommon favor? You know, the enemy knows something. Let me, let me leave this with you. The enemy knows something. He knows that when grace comes upon you, something is going to happen. You will receive promotion. So the enemy comes your way to hinder you so that you do not receive promotion. But guess what? He's defeated in the name of Jesus. I want to decree and declare that enemy that is standing your way to hinder you from receiving the grace of God that brings promotion. He is defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. You will defeat that enemy by keeping on serving. You know promotion comes by keeping on serving. As you keep on serving, as you keep on serving, guess what? The grace of God will lift you to a place of promotion. When Joseph was serving Potiphar in Genesis 13, he was promoted to be the head person in Potiphar's house. When he was thrown into prison, he kept on serving. He was promoted to be the head prisoner. Guess what? When he kept on serving, and he kept on serving, he was promoted to become the, the prime minister of Egypt in Genesis 41. I came to speak to someone today. That promotion will come your way, whether the devil likes it or not. Every enemy that is standing on your way to hinder you from the grace that promotes you, that lifts you. Right now, I come against it in the name of Jesus. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it right now. I destroy it right now. That spirit of the devil that stands on your way to hinder you from accessing your lifting. I come against it right now. I decree and declare this is your moment of a promotion. May that enemy be defeated. If you believe in shout and say amen, you shall be a ruler in your domain like Joseph you will rise to your place like Joseph you will rise to a level in the name of Jesus because the enemy has no place in your life the other reason you know why the enemy is fighting you and does not want you to get this uncommon grace is because the enemy knows that grace will equip you so he does not want you to be equipped and is fighting you not to be equipped but guess what that enemy is defeated you shall be equipped I said you shall be equipped Titus chapter 2 verse 11, the Bible says, For the grace of God has appeared and that, that offers salvation to all people. And the Bible says, it teaches us to do what? To say no to ungodliness. The grace of God teaches us. Do you know the grace of God is a teacher? The grace of God will teach you. My brother, there is an enemy that does not want you to access the teaching that comes by the grace of God. But tonight as I come to the closure of this meeting, I want to tell you, you shall be taught. You, the dead teacher shall come your way. That demon will not succeed. That enemy will not succeed. The grace of God will teach you. Are you in a place where you feel inadequate? The grace of God will equip you in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive the teaching that comes by the grace of God. Some of you, there are things you do not know how to do. You do not know how to coordinate some things. But the grace of God is going to teach you. And before long, people will see breaking news. The one who did not know, now knows. The one who was not 
celebrated, now is celebrated. The one who was behind, now has catch up. The one who did not do it, no, know how to accomplish anything, now is able to accomplish anything. Why? Because the grace of God has taught them. And this grace will teach you, if you do what? Believe in the ways of the Lord. That enemy that has hindered you from accessing the grace of God, I bind it again in the name of Jesus. May you access the teaching that comes from the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. The teaching that comes from God. You know, grace is powerful. Grace is powerful. And the enemy knows if you access grace, you will access power. But let me tell you tonight, you will defeat that enemy. Because by defeating that enemy, you have power. You gain power. The grace of God gives you power. Acts chapter 4 verse 33. The Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord. And great grace was upon them. Great power is a function of great grace. And the devil knows he does not want you to access this great power. This great grace that comes in your life and ushers you into a place of great power. But tonight, he's going to be defeated in the name of Jesus. We are going to defeat that enemy. That enemy that is standing on your way, making you not to access great power. We come against it in the name of Jesus and we decree, may you receive, may you receive it in the name of Jesus. May you become strong in your grace. May you become strong in your grace. May you become strong in your grace. In the name of Jesus. The enemy knows, the enemy knows something. Ah, this is good. The enemy knows that you will have abundance. That is why he's fighting you. When you have grace, you get abundance. And the enemy knows you will have abundance. That is why he's fighting you. But tonight, you have to defeat that enemy. You have to access your abundance. The enemy does not want you to get into abundance. But you know, the devil is a liar. It is imposicant. You will get your abundance. You cannot live in lack forevermore. Because God is giving you abundance. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. The Bible says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you having, having all sufficiently in all things. Have abundance abundance for every good work i want to tell you you will have abundance and one reason why the devil does not want you to have abundance is because he knows when you have abundance you will do good works but tonight by the grace of god you are getting to the place of abundance you are getting to the place of abundance and that abundance will cause you to do good work good work is a result of having abundance in God and I finish by telling you this grace that God is releasing in your life the devil knows the devil knows completely that when you have grace your gifts are gonna be useful so one reason he's fighting you is to make you useless but you will not be useless your gifts are gonna be useful every gift that God has given unto you it shall be useful it shall be useful and it's the reason why you see God has gifted people and some people don't use their gift because they do not have the knowledge that as I keep on using this gift, grace keeps on increasing in my life. So the devil has succeeded to keep people in corners without using their gifts. And for that reason, they have not amounted to any big thing. But tonight we wanted to get back to that gift. Use it. Because as you use it, you will, you will get the grace of God increasing in your life and common grace is for people who have fought these enemies and have defeated their enemies i want to pray with you tonight i want to usher you to a place where you will have victory in the name of the lord every enemy that is standing your way you have to defeat it in the name of the lord why because enemies that come they come to hinder you from your promotion they come to hinder you from your abundance. They come to hinder you from your place of what? Of power. They come to render you useless. But that shall not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say my father. My father. Tonight. Tonight. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. By the power. By the power. That is in the name of Jesus. That is in the name I of overcome. Jesus. I overcome. Every enemy. Every enemy. That is hindering me. That is hindering From accessing me. the grace of from God. Accessing the grace I of God. I break you right now. I break it in right the now. name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And common grace. And common grace. Is my portion. Is my portion. In the name of the Lord. In the name now of the Lord. Now take time and pray. Take time and pray. And 
common grace. Is your portion. Is your portion. Is your portion. Is your portion. We break the works of the devil. We break the works of the evil one. We destroy them right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, make this prayer. Decree and declare tonight. I have victory. I have victory. I am receiving receiving uncommon grace. I am receiving uncommon grace. I am receiving uncommon grace. I am receiving uncommon faith and grace. In the name of Jesus. I am receiving uncommon grace. I am receiving uncommon grace. In the name of Jesus. I am receiving uncommon grace. I am receiving uncommon grace. I am receiving uncommon grace. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Receive and come on, grace. Receive and come on, grace. In the name of Jesus. Receive and come on, grace. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. I decree, receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Of in Jesus, the name of I pray Jesus. receive it now. Oh, yes. Receive it now. I receive. Victory I over, receive. That I over that yes. enemy. Over that enemy. Over that enemy that is standing on I your way. Receive. Over that I enemy that is standing on your way Jesus. to hinder you from accessing the oh, grace of God of right now. We break it right now. We break it right now. We decree that your people will access this grace. Let them have victory over the enemies of grace. Let them have victory over the enemies of grace. Let them have victory. Over the, of over the enemies of grace. Let them have victory over the enemies of grace. Let them have victory over the enemies of grace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, God, we are praying that there shall be victory. There oh, shall yes. be victory. Oh, yes. Pray this after me. Say, my Father. My Father. My fighter. My fighter. Let faith. Let faith. Be born in me. Be born in me. In the name of in Jesus. The name of Jesus. Let, new faith Let new faith come in my life. Come in my life. Let new faith. Let new faith. In Increase in my life. Increase in my in life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I move in faith. I move in I faith. I move by faith. I move by in faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of now Jesus. Now pray for that. In the mighty because name faith of is a Jesus. function of grace. I speak grace faith, Lord. demands faith. New faith. La in the name of Jesus. Oh, King King of glory. I pray, I for, your I pray for your people tonight. 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 I pray for your people tonight, God. I speak Let them have faith. Over my life, Moka to hold Zada. Of King of Let Glory. Let faith increase. In the name Help of Jesus. Us in our Help us in our unbelief. Help us in our unbelief. Help your people there unbelief. Let them have faith tonight. Faith. Let them increase Lord, in their faith tonight. Let Lord, I command. Let them increase in their faith tonight. Faith. Yes, Lord. Lord in the Do it for them, God. Do it for them, Father. Do it for them, God. We thank you, God. And we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody shout and say amen? Amen. Come on, shout and say amen. amen. One more thing that I wanted to pray for. I wanted to pray and pray that the abundance of faith, the abundance of grace, sorry, will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say my father. My father. Say my father. My father. Increase. Increase. Multiply. Multiply. Your grace. Your grace. In my life. In my life. Multiply. Multiply. Your grace. Your grace. In my life. In my life. Let the abundance of grace. Let the abundance of rest grace. Over my life. Rest over my life. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And common grace. And common grace. In the month of May. In the month of Let May. Let it come upon my Let life. Let it come over my now life. Now take time and in pray. The mighty name take of time Jesus. and pray. I speak Lord, 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 and common grace 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 and for your people God thank you Father for doing it we bless you God we exalt you and we magnify you in Jesus name we pray can somebody shout and say amen